Good morning. Welcome back this morning. Yesterday morning, we looked through where the people of God were seeking to Jeremiah. What does he, God want us to do? What is his will? Ten days pass by and God answers. Is he testing his people? We're looking today at Jeremiah chapter 42 and our reading is from verses 7 to 12 this morning. And it happened after ten days that the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Then he called Johanan the son of Kareah and all the captains of the forces which were with him and all the people from the least even to the greatest and said to them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, to whom you sent me to present your petition before him. If you will still remain in this land, then I will build you and not pull you down, and I will plant you and not pluck you up, for I relent concerning the disaster that I have brought upon you. Do not be afraid of the king of Babylon, of whom you are afraid. Do not be afraid of him, says the Lord, for I am with you to save you and deliver you from his hand. And I will show you mercy that he may have mercy on you and cause you to return to your own land. Now, the next four mornings, we're going to unpack God's response to his people and what's really going on in their hearts. Now, right here, God's response begins with one of the most important words to a covenant-keeping God. Did you notice that word? It's just a little in the English language. It's just two letters, if, if, and we have it right here. Verse 10, if you will still remain in this land, then, and in old computer language, computer programming, we used to have in basic, you know, if and then, if, you know, this thing, then these things. And here's what we have often in the prophets, condition and then the result. A lot of people try to write the word if out of the Bible. There's no ifs. It's just God's just dropping blessings down upon us and, and we can't hardly catch them all. But if we listen closely, very, very many times, there's a big if somewhere. Somehow we want to close our ears to the big ifs. But here's a big if, if they stay in the land. So that's an interesting piece here. He wants them to stay. The others have gone in captivity to Babylon. God wants these to stay. He's got a purpose for them where they are. Now, it's also interesting that right here we go back to Jeremiah chapter 1 and verses 9 and 10 because he says, if you stay, then I'll build you and plant you. But there's, there's going to be some things that if they don't stay, happen. Did you notice what we had back at Jeremiah chapter 1 in verses 9 and 10? Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms. This was God's instruction to Jeremiah. And then these, these six things, to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. So there were four sort of negatives there and two positives, to root out and pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. And God's instruction to his prophet was, was that. He has these purposes he's going to fulfill and do through his prophet. If they obey, he will build and plant. If they disobey, why then we get the other pieces, right? To destroy and pull down and all that. They asked God what he wanted, and he's telling them again. He already told them, but he's telling them again in a very generous way what they need to do. He's so much more than fair with us. Uh, one other piece that's quite interesting here is at verse 12. And I will show you mercy that he may have mercy on you and cause you to return to your own land. Who, who, who is this? The king of Babylon. God will show mercy to his people and he will cause the king of Babylon to show mercy to his people because God moves the hearts of kings and rulers at times. And so this is a promise from him. Boy, I sure hope they're listening and, tr and trusting. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, please give us your strength so that we may have endurance for the spiritual tests that we face. Be our helper, be our protector, be our leader in a time when many of us are frivolous and, and sort of think we should just lead ourselves. Oh Lord, please you be our leader. Thank you for hearing our request. We can ask it not on our own authority, but on the authority of Jesus who gave himself to build us up. Thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God is for us. Jesus is for us. The Holy Spirit is for us. But a lot of these things are going to take some definite self-discipline so that we restrain ourselves, withhold ourselves from doing things we might have an inclination to do and be truly servants of the God of heaven. In this day, may God be your helper.